But wait, there's more. Look. So here we have a linear factor, and here we have a quadratic factor. If this was a minus, all right, we know how to do this problem. We did one like this in the first video. We just factor that down to x minus 3 times x plus 3, and then you have three, um, three linear factors. But this is an irreducible quadratic factor because it's got a plus, right? If it's got a plus, I can't, I can't break it up into linear factors unless I've got i involved. And I don't want to have i involved here, okay? So over the reals, this is irreducible. So the best I can do in terms of breaking this up is going to be to have this one times that one, right? However, now there's something more because remember we talked about, oh, these are all going to be constants because there's one underneath. Well, here, because it's a quadratic, you're breaking this up. You need to be as general as possible. So it's not good enough to have just a constant up here because you need one less than the um, order of what's underneath. So I have to have an x up here, but I also have to have a constant. So basically what I want up here is bx plus c. So whenever you have an x squared plus whatever, you're going to have a bx plus c. Okay, that's how it's going to break up. So we're going to go ahead and go ahead and do this problem, but you can now see also when I put this in here, I have to... I've, it's not just going to be natural log, right? I, do, I have to, when I integrate it, it's going to have some more stuff going on there. All right, so it becomes progressively more complicated as we get sort of more powers involved in everything. Okay? But this part isn't too bad because we've seen with three coefficients, it's not terrible. And here, what do I have? X minus 1 x squared plus 9. So I have a times x squared plus 9 plus bx plus c times x minus 1. Okay, so then there's only 10 on the left-hand side here. Okay, so on the right-hand side, I've got ax squared plus 9a, and then this is bx plus c times x minus 1. So I've got bx squared plus cx minus bx minus c. So let's put their, let's clean it up a little here. a plus b times x squared. That gives those guys. And uh, minus b plus c times x. Boom, boom. And then I've got 9a minus c times my constant. Okay, well, there's no coefficients for x squared here. In other words, it's like the coefficient of x squared being 0. So if it makes more sense, I can even write it in specifically. 0 times x squared plus 0 times x plus 10. So what is in front of... The x squared has to be 0. What is in front of the x also has to be 0. And what's in front of this is just the constant. There's only the constant left. So 9a plus c minus c equals 10. Okay. So this, okay, is not that hard to solve um, by hand anyway. So because you can see, because these zeros make things very easy. So b minus b plus c equals 0. This implies that b equals c. And then what I end up is, if I get that, it gets rid of the b. So I have a plus c equals 0 and 9a minus c equals 10. 
that gives me 10a equals 10, right? So I immediately have a equals 1, b equals negative 1 from this one, and then c also equals negative 1, right? Because b equals c. So that's my solution. So I need to put that back in here and do the integral, okay? So I'm going to write this here, and then I'm going to erase so I have more space to do these integrals. Okay, plus bx plus c, so minus x minus 1 over x squared plus 9 dx. So, over here, um, I'm just going to split the, first of all, this one is easy, it's just natural log, but I'll just ignore it for now, just put it there. Here, I've got this thing, what I want to do with this is I want to split it up into two pieces, okay? So, I want um, this first one to be minus x over x squared plus 9, and then minus 1 over x squared plus 9. Okay? So now I can go ahead, I can go ahead and do them. Um, maybe do a little work in the margins here. Right, this one is going to be my u substitution. I'm going to do u in the bottom, u equals x squared plus 9. Let me just do it over here because I feel like I should write it out. Um, Actually, I don't really need to. I'll just write it in two steps. Maybe I don't. I'll just write it over here so it looks nice over there. So integral of x over x squared plus 9 dx. If you see what I'm doing, you can just ignore me for a minute or fast forward me, right? du <laughs> equals 2x dx, right? So x dx is in the top. It's 1 half du. So this is just going to be 1 half du over u. So that's also a natural log because I have this x in the top, right? So then this is going to be 1 half natural log of x squared plus 9. However, this guy is not a natural log because I don't have the x in the top. This looks like, well, looks like inverse tan, right? Inverse tan is 1 over x squared plus 1. This has a x squared plus 9. You can do the thing where you pull out the 9 and blah, 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 blah. Or you can just look on the sheet and use the form, right? There's a, there is on the sheet of basic integrals, there's 1 over x squared plus a squared because this comes up so often in this context. So you'll see that the integral of 1 over x squared plus a squared on your basic sheet is going to be 1 over a inverse tan of x over a, and it's okay to just use that, okay? And so that's our answer. Yep.